Shalom and welcome to all my brothers and sisters around this earth. Now, this Paul character, who you find in many of the books in the Christian Bible, in the Greek, the guy who claims to be an apostle, the truth about Paul is that he was not referred to as an apostle by the actual followers of Yeshua, the historical Yeshua. They did not like Paul, and they wrote about him. They were first called the Nazareans, Later, they were dubbed the Ebionites by the Church, the Roman Catholic Church, and all the churches of Europe, recognized that there was a group of Christians based in Jerusalem who believed without a shadow of a doubt that when Yeshua passed away, that James, or Yaakov, he would have been called Yaakov, Hatzadik, which means James the, the Righteous, really, not uh, James the Just, but James the Righteous, which is a term, Sadok, is something that's given to someone who's very, very serious, careful in their observance of the Torah. So yes, these Jewish followers of Yeshua were Torah observant. They did not believe in the Talmud. They followed only the Hebrew scriptures. They did not believe that Yeshua was divine. They did not believe he was the Mashiach. This is a fact. This is historical reality. No, they did not believe he was the Messiah whatsoever. They did not worship him. They did not believe that he died for their sins. In fact, we have documentation by his own family, although controversial. There's a book called the Didache. You can look this up. There's a lot of controversy behind it. Of course it's controversial because it goes against the church teachings. People don't like that because they want to believe that Yeshua was divine and believe all the Christian rhetoric or messianic rhetoric, whatever you want to call it. It's nonsense. The legitimate truth is that the followers of Yeshua were led by James, period. James Yaakov was the leader for 30 years. This is historical fact. There's no way around this. He was a leader for 30 years after Yeshua died, period. Period. And the fact of the matter is, the actual followers of Yeshua did not like Paul. They despised him. They called him a liar, a heretic, and a traitor to the Torah itself. So this video is for those who try to defend Paul and actually with nerve try to say that Paul was Torah observant, that he was pro-Torah, even though his message is very clear to anybody who picked up his book. And it was obviously clear to hundreds and hundreds of years of the Catholic Church who loved Paul, who were all about Paul. Paul's team of the Gentiles, his movement with Gentiles, was clearly and convincingly completely free of Torah observance. If Paul was so pro-Torah, he would have had followers that were pro-Torah observant to this day. But we did not have that. Paul is basically the beginner of the Catholic Church, period. There's no way around that, no matter what you say against that, it's not true. Paul's team of the Gentiles, his movement, is what created the Catholic Church, which destroyed the movement, the original movement, of what was dubbed the Ebionites, who followed that Yeshua, or Jesus, was merely a great teacher that taught them, warned them about Talmudic Judaism, and to follow the way of the Torah according to what is written. Almost, I'm not going to say it was a Karite movement, but very, very similar to Karites, Israelites, as myself. That being the case, let's get back to the point. That being said, this is the historical reality. You can look this up. This is not something you have to believe what I say. You can look it up for yourself. The Catholic Church Fathers wrote about the Ebionites and attacked them. And he, they clarified the enemies of the Jewish sect clarified that there was a movement that was anti-Paul, kept the Torah, and the Catholic Gentiles did not. That being said, let's take a look at some passages. I'm gonna, I picked out the, without a doubt, the most severe passages of Paul's message of anti-Torah. For those of you who want to defend that Paul was pro-Torah, I think by the end of this video, I hope so, that you will wake up smell the roses that Paul was not Torah observant he did not love the Torah 
his message was very, very clear. There we go. I'm just going to a handful of passages to let you know exactly who Paul was. Okay? Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13. Now, I know a lot of scholars believe he did not write this, but this is very Pauline. Hebrews is a book that was very Pauline-friendly. Very much like the book of Romans. That being said, it's in the Christian Bible. Okay? It says in chapter 8, verse 13, And speaking of the new covenant, he treats the first as obsolete. And what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24 through 25. It says there, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Now this is Paul in Galatians. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Torah, being made a curse for us. Listen up carefully. So that the law was our schoolmaster. The word schoolmaster here, I consider it likely to saying like training wheels on a bicycle. You start off with training wheels as a child, and then he says to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after the faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. We get rid of the training wheels. Romans chapter 7 verse 6. There goes Paul again. But now we are delivered from the Torah, that being dead where we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the old oldness of the letter. But if you are led of the spirit, you are not under the law. It doesn't say you're also under the law. It says you are not under the law. It's very, very clear, explicit, and it gets worse. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. Having abolished in his flesh the ordinance, even the Torah of commandments, or the law of commandments. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, Paul speaks about blotting out, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, he says. Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. Paul says, So if you are dead with Christ from the vanity of of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you chained to orders? Chained to orders. It's very clear. How much clearer can you get? And it gets worse. I got a lot more here. Galatians chapter 5, verse 2. Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you get circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. So if you're circumcised, forget it. Christ will give you nothing. You won't benefit at all. Even though the Torah says you must be circumcised. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20. Now this is as clear as it comes. This is Paul and his anti-Torah message for dummies. For those who deny that Paul was not Torah observant. They say, no, Paul was pro-Torah. You just don't understand. You've never read 2 Peter. How many times do I have to hear this argument? Does anybody know when 2 Peter was written? No, you don't. Look it up. What was Peter writing at 140, 150 years old? Get out of here with your 2 Peter nonsense. He says here, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20. Listen carefully. Listen to this hypocrite deceiver. To the Jew, he says, I became as a Jew in order to convert the Jews to those under the law as one under the law. What do you mean as one under the law? If he's so pro-Torah, if he was already under the law, why do you say as one? Pay attention to what he's saying here. To those under the law as one under the law. Even though, listen carefully, even though I myself am not under the law. I'm going to repeat that again because some people just don't get it. Now to my followers, my subscribers, this is not to you. 
This video is for those who defend that Paul was pro-Torah, regardless of all this. Let me read it again. Even though I myself am not under the law, in order to convert those under the law. He's a deceiver. He's a snake. And this is why the Ebionites hated this guy. They wrote about him. He's a liar, a heretic, and a lunatic, and a traitor to the Torah. Galatians chapter 5 verse 4. Listen to what this sweetheart says about the Torah here. You are separated from Christ. You who are trying to be called righteous under the law. You have fallen away from his undeserved kindness. Galatians chapter 3 verses 1 through 2. He's screaming at the Galatians. Oh, you say senseless Galatians. Who has brought you under this evil influence? Who has had Jesus Christ openly portrayed to you as nailed to a cross? He's screaming at them. What are you doing? Galatians chapter 2 verse 21. For if righteousness came from the Torah, Christ died in vain. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ brought us, or bought us, to free us from the curse of the law. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Even Romans, which is basically a book that is full of uh, me and one of, one of my brothers, we went through Romans. Romans is the only book that's used by Messianics to defend Paul because he's going through a bunch of rhetoric, leaps and loops, loop-de-loop -loop conversations to try to fool you and going, oh, maybe he's a little Torah observant. Well, maybe not. Maybe he is. No, you can see right through his nonsense once you pay attention to what he's actually saying. It's a mind game. He's mind raping you into thinking, oh, I'm not, I'm not speaking against the Torah. God forbid. He always says that over and over. God forbid. Am I saying that the law is not no longer important? God forbid, no. But then he sneakily says this kind of crap right here. Romans 6, 14. For sin will not dominate over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 7, verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law, which we were held dead inside it, that we can serve in the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. That's disgusting. That's what he says about God's commandments. Galatians chapter 4 verse 9. But now, after you have known God, or rather known by God, how do you turn? Listen to his words. How do you turn to the weak and useless elements? Do you want to be enslaved? He calls the Torah weak and useless. Here we go, Titus, chapter 3, verse 9. Do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels and fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. Isn't that nice? Now, this is one of my favorites right here. Look at this. You want to know how much he cares? Look at what he says about the apostles. Yes, the apostles. He is speaking about the followers of Yeshua that kept the law. He says this in his letters. They call him a liar. And in many of his letters, he has to defend himself over and over and over. He's constantly saying, listen, folks, I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying. He says it over and over and over again. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. That's what he says. Listen carefully. Philippians chapter 3 verses 2 through 4, and then we're going to read verses 8 through 9. Listen carefully. He's talking to the disciples here. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. What does he mean, watch out? He's talking to his followers. Yeshua's real followers were coming to these Gentiles and saying, this guy is a fraud and a liar. This is not what Yeshua taught. Watch out for these dogs, these mutilators of the flesh. What does he mean, mutilators of the flesh? Circumcision. For it is we who are of the, of the circumcision, we who observe God by the Spirit, meaning not of the flesh, of the Spirit, who boast in Jesus Christ, but who put no confidence in the flesh. 
Though I myself have reasons for such confidence. Here we go. The bragging Paul. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more, he says. And listen carefully what he says about the Torah. This is the most filthy, filthy statement he ever wrote about the Torah. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, meaning his former life, that he claims to be so Torah observant. Pharisee of Pharisees, he always says, I'm, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He says, I consider them all, the whole Torah, listen carefully, as worthless as excrement. Now, this is a nice word. The Greek word used here, you can look it up, is a vile, detestable word. That is a vulgar word that literally means S-H-I-T, or the equivalence of saying the Torah is as worthless as S-H-I-T. Yes. This is the word that is used here. And you can look it up for yourself. Do the research. That's what he's saying. The whole Torah, God's commandments, is as worthless as excrement. S-H-I-T, to be exact. Listen carefully. For those of you who believe that he was not speaking about the actual followers of the real Yeshua, listen carefully. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4 and 5. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, what other Jesus? What do you mean another? What is he talking about? Why would he care? A lot of a lot of Christians and Messianics like to defend this and say, oh, he's not talking about the disciple. He's talking about some nobodies. Then why even mention him? If he was an apostle of the apostles, he was such a big shot that he ran the show. Why even mention this? Look, listen carefully. <coughs> Or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you received, or a different gospel? Now let me tell you something interesting. These Nazareans, or Ebionites, believed in a gospel. Only one. They had an ancient Hebrew version of Matthew. <clears throat> they believed in the gospel of an ancient version of Matthew. That was very different than the Matthew in your Christian Bible. It's very interesting here. He talks about another gospel. What other gospel? If these were nobodies, why even mention them? No, these were somebodies. Listen carefully. From the one you accepted, another gospel, you put up with it easily enough. And listen carefully here. Verse 5 of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I do not think I am inferior to those super apostles. Super apostles? He doesn't think they're super apostles. He's mocking them. I do not think I am inferior to those super apostles. What super apostles? Why even call them apostles? Yes, folks, he was speaking about the actual followers of Yeshua, the real apostles, who are Torah observant, who are calling him out for the fraud liar that he was. Here we go again. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. In the next chapter, he speaks about him again. Mocks him again. This is verse 11, 12, and 16. Look it up. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and chapter 12. Read the whole two chapters and you'll figure it out for yourself. He's not speaking to some nobody or group of nobodies. He's going out of his way to warn his followers. He calls them over and over. He calls them rival teachers and mockingly as super apostles. I have made a fool of myself, but you drove me to it. I thought I should have been commended by you, for I am not inferior to those super apostles. Even though I am nothing, I persevered in demonstrating among you the marks of a true apostle. He's boasting, I'm a true apostle, including signs, wonders, and miracles. 
be that as it may, I have not been a burden to you, listen carefully, yet crafty fellow that I am, I caught you by trickery. He's a trickster. He's a marksman. He's a fraud. Openly. You heard earlier when I read to you, when he said, to the Jew I became as a Jew, even though I am not under the Torah. He's a conniving, two-faced snake. And that's why the real movement hated his guts. And that's why he's defending himself and saying, I'm not less than these super apostles. I am more. I am a true apostle. He's always going, he's talking about my gospel. I, Paul, say to you, my gospel. Don't listen to them. I'm not lying. Over and over and over again. He's trying so hard. Listen to this. First, uh, Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. I am stunned that you are so quickly abandoning him who called you in the grace of Christ. And you are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preached to you, let him be cursed. That's what he says. On and on and on. He just is so worried about this group. Who is he worried about? Now, if you're in denial, you're going to say, no, no, no. You don't know what you're talking about. Look, if Paul was such a big shot, a Pharisee, a Pharisee, a true apostle, given visions of God, he wouldn't have wrote all this warnings and then saying another gospel and saying, don't listen to these rival teachers, these super apostles. I'm not less than them. I am more. And screaming, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. I'm not lying. You don't open up the Hebrew scriptures and read Ezekiel or Isaiah or Jeremiah saying, listen, folks, I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. Usually they can give their prophecy without saying, I'm not lying to you. But Paul is constantly having to argue for himself. He's trying so hard. He's, he's, he's constantly in defense of his own self. It's like a, a lunatic that doesn't have a lawyer. He's constantly trying to defend himself. He's objecting for himself. I object! He was a fraud. Now, I made this video for those of you who are on the fence and actually believe that this guy was pro Torah, that they were all could they were all buddy buddies. The point of the matter is, Acts, the book of Acts, was written very late. It's a very late book. That book was written specifically to tell the story that Paul and the apostles were not enemies, that they were actually together. They worked together. Now there was there's little hints in there, like in chapter 21, where James calls out Paul. It's very interesting. He calls out Paul for his bluff and he goes, look, look for yourself, Acts 21. He goes, we've been hearing about you, Paul. You teach all the Jews to forsake Moses. And what happens is, long story short, he tells him to give a sacrifice of the Nazirs. And all the Jews in the temple lose their mind and call out Paul for what he was, a fraud, anti-Torah and anti-Temple. They say, this is the man who teaches every man to forsake Moses. He is against the Torah and against this place. Acts was written to make, to sugarcoat the problems between these two separate groups. Now, if you read the book of Galatians from chapter 1 through chapter 4, Paul tells you, now, the book of Acts was written late, 100, 120, it was very late. Paul's letters are the earliest in the Christian Bible. He wrote in the 40s and 50s. And in his own letters, he tells you the story. Acts makes it seem like it was seamless. He had his vision, he went straight to Jerusalem, and bam, got together with the disciples, and they all lived happily ever after, converting everybody. Well, Paul himself says differently. Read Galatians chapter 1 verse through 4, chapters 1 through 4. He tells you himself. He said, after his vision, he disappeared in the deserts of Arabia for three years. Yes, three years, he says, I disappeared. And he only returned to Jerusalem, or went to Jerusalem, he says, for two weeks. Two weeks. And he only met with two of the disciples. 
James, and Peter. And then he says, he left Jerusalem and disappeared for 14 years and then came back and says he had issues with the disciples and had a confrontation. So it's very clear that there was not a connection. They were not close buddy buddies. There was a problem. So that's what I'm basically showing you in this presentation. You can look it up for yourself. You can believe what you want or look it up. So this Apostle Paul, self-proclaimed Apostle Paul, was a fraud according to the real followers of Yeshua. But at the end of the day, Paul won the battle. And the Torah observant followers of Yeshua disappeared in history. And Paul's teachings lived on. Though there are messianics who keep the Torah, still a lot of the filth that Paul taught is still taught even within messianic beliefs. And the true teachings about the real movement of the real Yeshua were lost. And no one's keeping them. Paul was a fraud, but he won because his message was very easy to follow. He went to the Gentiles and said, look, you want to have the covenant of the Jews? Be holy like the Jews? Don't worry about it. You don't got to keep the law. You don't got to get circumcised. All you got to do is believe in the Messiah who died for your sins. And even the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible spoke about this. Abraham believed and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So therefore, he's calling all the Gentiles. Just believe in him. The Gentiles grabbed it hook, line, and sinker. Paul won the battle in the end. The winners write the history books. Sometimes the bad guys write the history books. Paul was a fraud.